most people don't really want to be a hundred millionaire or a billionaire. They may say that, but they, they, don't, they wouldn't want the responsibility of running global corporations, the weight of controlling a billion in assets. What they really want, what we've come down to is like between 10 and 20 million liquid invested properly so they can do what they want with who they want, when they want and where they want. Hey, are you ready to accelerate your wealth building and increase your performance? Brian Dalsamo of Matrix Success Networks is here to help. This is the Launch Your Business podcast, because we know starting a business is challenging, but it doesn't have to be confusing. Each week, we'll give you the tactical advice and the necessary tools to scale your business without feeling burnt out. I'm Terry Rice, business development consultant and staff writer here at Entrepreneur Magazine. Let's dive in. I was recently at a mastermind for More Capital. It was a two-day event, and I spoke on day one, but I stuck around afterwards so I could learn from the other speakers. I always do this. It's like getting a free pass to the conference and getting paid to be there. On day two, Brian Del Samo, founder of Matrix Success Networks, took the stage. And after his presentation, two thoughts came to mind. The first was, man, I am so glad I don't have to go after him. <laughs> Seriously, the guy just crushed it. He delivered incredibly valuable information in a short period of time and then gave tactic level responses to the questions raised by the audience, like no fluff or trite responses, just, it's just pure value. My next thought was, I got to interview this guy so I can share his knowledge with you. Brian is the founder of Matrix Success Networks, an organization that serves individuals and businesses who wish to accelerate their wealth building and performance. And look, if you only do one thing after listening to this podcast, you have to go to his website and complete his free Wheel of Life exercise. It's an interactive chart used to map out exactly where you're at in all facets of life now so that you can have a blueprint to achieve the highest level of fulfillment. I'll pass along more information on that shortly. For now, let's get into the conversation with Brian. We'll discuss why listening to others can actually stop you from making progress, the power of having your goals written down, and how you can use a tool called a life script to start your day and keep your goals at the forefront. Let's hop into it right now. Brian, great to chat with you today. No, good, good to meet you too. Thanks for inviting me to the podcast. This is something secretly, you probably don't know this, I've been looking to get with you guys anyway. It's on my list. So this is, uh, this is divine attraction. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Do you mind just sharing what you do with our audience before we uh, hop into it? Yeah, no, I'd love to. So, uh, you know, my background was engineering. I worked at GE for many years, architecture, construction, pretty traditional stuff. Um, and I'm really compressing this. But at age 41, I met my mentor, Bob Proctor. And I resonated so much. He was teaching the metaphysics of how a human being uh, thinks and acts and operates. So spirit, intellect, and body as applies towards uh, wealth creation, right? Not money creation, but wealth, the whole human experience. And we can dig deeper into that. Um, but the paradigm shift in my life with, at age 41 was meeting a man who at that point had been studying every single day for like 59, uh, 55 years uh, on how the mind-body connection works, right? the conscious, the subconscious, and the body. So I just instantly fell in love with the content with him. And I, I used this content to literally meet him in person and, and, and then work with him and mentee under him and spend one-on-one -on -one time with him for almost 10 years and uh, just teaching, coaching, training all over the world on, on how the world's fraction of 1% think and act and operate. So let's, let's get into that because, yeah. I mean, I think that's what we're all interested in learning more about. So sure. how do these fraction of 1% uh, think and operate? Give us some, uh, some clues here. So they're, they're using their imagination. This sounds maybe rudimentary, but they're, they're not looking at the, at the environment. They're not looking at the current anything to cause their thinking. They're not looking at the economy or, or what is to cause their thinking. They're thinking to cause new results. Like Elon Musk is looking to populate Mars because he knows at some point we will exhaust this planet's resources, right? So he's not looking at the planet and thinking. He's saying, I see something, and he's imagining. And the other thing these people do is they do not care what anybody thinks. They're not, I use the phrase, lions are not concerned with the opinions of sheep, right? And that may sound narcissistic and ego, egotistical, but there's a, there's a hum, humanitarianism thinking to that, right? You, you can't be concerned with the masses are thinking when you're trying to change the world. So they, the, the second thing they do is they're not concerned about what their spouse, their kids, or anybody else thinks about what they're doing. They get an idea in their mind, and they get it into the subconscious, and then they move forward and create. You know, some of these people are 
unfortunately not good examples because they're not really humanitarians, but I like right. to use Richard Branson. Mm -hmm. He is this way and he's created billions of wealth and he's helped so many people by, by being a, a humanist, a spiritualist, doing fun stuff, got his own island, right? But he's got like, you know, give back programs, second chance programs for convicted convicts. Like I look at he, him and Steve Jobs as polar opposite. One was a complete narcissist who stepped on people to create. And Richard Branson, in my opinion, you know, the dude's like in his late seventies going to space. He can physically outrun his whole crew. And he's always been tapped into God and spirit. He's always been loving on people. I mean, he's got music and cruise ships and airline, all fun companies, right? So to me, he's wealthy. He's a balanced between all the things with business and money and philanthropy and spirituality. And that's who I'm looking to really, that's who I see that I'm looking to kind of model. So what's our first step into, you know, just crossing over to this, this no, new level of, I don't say existence, because I'm I kind of going to reach there. It's but a new level of awareness is what it is, right? There and we again, go. What, this what's is the first not step good or that? bad, it's just awareness. I, I always like talk to people about awareness, not about good or bad, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, myself or, or, or Bob Proctor or Richard Branson, they're not any better or any worse than anybody. They're just more aware. So their physical results, relatively speaking to the world, are are at a massive scale, right? So the first step is even listening to something like this, just becoming aware that you can do something about it. Like when we're born, we're born a blank slate with no programs. We can't speak, we can't walk, right? And like you saw in my presentation, we're programmed by our parents and school systems. And you know that programming is very ignorant and ignorance is not a bad term. It just means not knowing, right? So unless you had somebody like Richard Branson as your dad, like shaping your programs as you grew up, most people just do not have the results they would desire physically, spiritually, relationships, and financially. They're going to jobs they hate. They're in relationships that they don't love, but they're afraid to leave. They're expressing through bodies, which they don't love, but they don't know how to change the mental programs to reshape their body. And they're not living a healthy, wealthy, happy life is, is what we're looking at. So the first step is awareness that it can be changed. And the second thing is to study about the mind-body connection. Right. Everybody's studying real estate, marketing, Bitcoin, currency, like they're studying physical things, but they don't know how they operate as a mechanism. Right. Metaphysics and, and, and electromagnetic beings and like the, the cybernetic mechanisms that we are, we can be reprogrammed to create any result we want. So I think step one is awareness. To start a business, what's the first thing you need? Exactly. A big idea. Now, once you have that big idea, you're going to need a technology partner with a network and security to help you get it out into the world. So is it possible to find a partner with all the solutions a new business needs? It is with Comcast Business. They have the largest, fastest, reliable network for small businesses, plus gig speed Wi-Fi to power every employee and all the devices that get the work done. And it will get done because this internet is consistent with 99.9% .9 network reliability to help keep you up and running and ready to succeed. You'll also get next level cybersecurity to help you against attacks. Oh, and as your business grows, Comcast Business Solutions can flex and grow right along with you. No problem. It's all on the next generation 10G network. No wonder Comcast Business powers more businesses than any other provider. So, do you have a business you're ready to bring to life? With Comcast Business, it's not just possible, it's happening. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. I appreciate that. And can you just kind of unpack what you mean by that? Like the whole metaphysical, like just yeah. awareness of ourselves and our interaction with the world? Absolutely. Yeah. So we, and I didn't know it, guys, I did not know any of this until age 41. I was rowing the same boat of ignorance for four decades. I always tell people I was divorced three times. I'd made money, lost money. I've been an engineer, an architect, a builder. So just mm -hmm. be aware, like, and understand I was not born with this information. I wasn't born like a Mark Zuckerberg. I was like probably everybody here listening and my results were up and down and chaotic. I am the example of going from ignorant to aware in mindset and wealth building. Um, so what we're talking about is, is understanding that we are a spirit and not in a religious sense, right? This is the, the metaphysics sense. This is the, the, the physics of the universe. We are energy, we are a spirit, we are consciousness, and we have an intellect, which is the thinking mind where we process information through sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. And then we express through a body. So when I say metaphysics, it's the mind-body connection between your conscious spirit and your body. 
Okay, that helps. So thank, thank you for that. Yeah. I, I didn't hopefully know that I was not the only one who needed <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who needed a clarification on that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I was looking at one of your most recent posts and you said, hey, alter your mindset. Being wealthy is a right, not a privilege. And, and I love that. But you also said there's a difference between wealth and money. So what is that, that distinction? So in our opinion, in the matrix, what people really want, and you hit it on the head, most people don't really want to be a hundred millionaire or a billionaire. They may say that, but they, they, don't, they wouldn't want the responsibility of running global corporations, the weight of controlling a billion in assets and 10,000 doors and, and 12 companies. Like Richard Branson has like over 300 interests in companies. Most people actually don't want that. What they really want, what we've come down to is like between 10 and 20 million liquid invested properly so they can do what they want with who they want, when they want and where they want. That's what freedom, freedom isn't just having your time, because if you can't travel, you can't create some of those experiences with the other human beings. And having a, a million dollars a month in income is not freedom either. If you're working 80 hours a week and you're tied to your own business, right? That's not freedom. That's just a lot of money coming in. Now, we do have like our elite 100 and everyone in there has a $100 million and up net worth goal and multiple billions and stuff like that, because they are looking to do what like a Richard Branson or Steve, they want to impact the globe. They want to leave legacy. They want to reshape something. My $21 billion goal is so I can help reshape education globally. Hmm. That's the whole reason. I don't need that, right? Like I said, 10 or 20 million liquid, right. you can do all the personal fun stuff, experience almost right. everything. You can even fly private jets with net jets or something. But anybody really striving for billions is either <laughs> a narcissist or they want to shape, reshape the or both. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to leave some wiggle room there. In regards to education, I mean, one thing that you talked about on stage was this wheel of life. Yeah. And I would love for you to just unpack that for our audience as well and let them know where they can access it because I believe you have that on your website. I'll give you a link to that. We have a $100 wheel of life assessment and it's a hundred question um, x-ray of where you're at, your physical environment, your business, your finances, which are two different things your health, your friends and family relationships, your personal spousal relationship, um, your physical environment, your spirituality, your personal development, and your philanthropy. So there's 10 points to our wheel of life. And we have a kind of an assessment to pull out of you and make this, this shape on a wheel. So you can right away see where that you're kind of lacking or where you might want to increase. And um, I can get you the link to that. So you can attach this in the the code for that, which you can listen to here, is Matrix VIP. Now, my team is going to kill me because this is something we charge for. But you know what? I'm not. I, I could, I'm about impacting people, and I want people to to know where they're at. So we'll get that. We'll get that for your your audience. Love it. It's funny. I um I saw it on your website, and I was almost afraid to answer some of the questions <laughs> because it's revealing. You know what I yeah. mean? I think we have to take that 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 pause and you know look at ourselves and what we're doing and how we're you know engaging with those around us, but it's not an easy assessment. You know what I mean? Like you're going to find areas where you fall short and the next step is to take action on it, but yeah. at least you're aware of it. You may be familiar with Fiverr, the talent marketplace that connects freelancers to companies all over the world. What you may not know is that Fiverr has a business friendly offering called Fiverr Pro. Gain access to the very best freelancers for your projects through Fiverr Pro's curated catalog of exceptional talent. Streamline your workflow with their user-friendly dashboard where you can organize projects, track progress, save talent lists, and collaborate effortlessly with your entire team. Designed to handle projects of any size, Fiverr Pro is the ultimate freelance solution for your business. And the best part, there are no hidden membership or subscription fees to get started. Find help with your next project by heading to pro.fiverr.com. That's P-R-O dot F-I-V-E-R-R dot -E com. I, I assume that some people will take this assessment or any assessment or this aware of the fact that they have to improve things and still not take action. So what would you say to someone who's aware of the fact they have to be more present in their relationship with their wife or they have to pay more attention to their business or whatever? What would you say to them to encourage them to actually take action on what they've learned? So that's that's the that's why we created the Mindset Masters, because if somebody's already in rough shape in an area, it means they don't know how to make decisions and they don't hold themselves accountable. I mean, I can give a couple of things right here and I will, but it's a life, it's a process over time, right? 
Let's pick the one or two things we want to work on. It's like, oh, you know what? It's like my finances and my health. Great. Um, one of the first things we encourage is to write out your goal. Mm -hmm. Less than 3% of the world has a goal at all. And less than 1% of us write it down and carry. I showed you my gold card, like carrying around a gold card. I have them right over here. So yeah. if somebody has a health goal. Can, can you explain the goal to everybody, please? Yep. A goal card is like a GPS direction in a navigation system. It's meant for your subconscious mind to just say, where am I going? So my current goal is I am so happy and grateful that I'm earning in excess of $10 million a month net from multiple revenue sources in a calm, confident, and heavenly manner. I could say that like my name. That is programmed from my conscious into my subconscious. So every morning I wake up, my body takes action to produce that goal, moving towards it, moving towards it, moving towards it. Um, if my health was in challenge, then I would have one similar. I'm so happy and grateful. Now that I've released unnecessary weight and I've, re I've reached my ideal weight and it feels X, Y, Z. Now, for those people that I say I want to lose weight, words are sound and sound is energy. What happens when you lose your wallet? Okay, Everything okay. about you tries to, oh, like, oh my God, I just lost my wallet. Your mind, body, soul, you get anxiety, depending on your wallet or your cell phone. Maybe your cell phone would be even, right? Everything about yeah. you, red, red alert, red alert, stop everything. Like, okay. let's go find this phone or wallet. That's why people yeah. that are trying to lose five pounds keep yo-yoing. Now, the word mm -hmm. release is something. We release things we don't need. So a, a little yeah. tidbit here is to realize, guys, like, don't set goals to get out of debt because you'll just you'll attract more of it. Don't set goals to lose weight. Don't set goals that have any negative connotation. Right? Set a goal to be right. in a perfect heavenly body as intended by God in nature. Or set a goal to get to 100000 a month because when you get 100000 a month, what happens to the debt? It naturally goes away. Right. Right. So that, that's, that's something yeah. we can do right here now on this podcast is those couple of things. Yeah, it's crazy how words really do have power. And that's why I'm because I used to read like a lot of Wayne Dyer books mm -hmm. uh, when I was younger. And he mentioned that too. Like you can't say, you know, I hope I don't get cancer because then you just put cancer. Yes. Out there. You have to say like, I hope I, oh my you know, God, I, want, I am going thing. to remain healthy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give it to you here. The one I have, it's a health, it's not even a goal. It's more of an affirmation because I am expressing amazingly awesome in this body. But I've been saying this yeah. for 10 years. I'm so happy and grateful that I live in a perfectly healthy body as intended by God. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean a religious God. I mean universal source, universal intelligence, right. consciousness, the, the same source that grows an acorn into an oak tree. So even an atheist can't deny that. And so because of that, I don't attract, like I was traveling all during COVID. I remember I was sitting in a restaurant in Vegas with eight other people and I found out a week later, they all had it. You cannot mm -hmm. catch or attract what you're not in harmony with. And since I'm mostly always in a high vibration, like 150 to 200 megahertz, and COVID is down at 50 megahertz, I was all around it and never attracted it. Speaking of megahertz, uh, mm -hmm. which I'm slightly familiar with, do you ever listen to like alpha waves or beta waves while you're while you're working? I don't, but I do believe I just haven't got around to it. Uh, I listen to my own yeah. life script, which is my own voice speaking my future existence as if it's now. It's about a half hour long. But I do believe and understand the technology, what you're saying, and it is a good thing to do. There, there, well, let's go back to your life script. That's, imp that's a, let's, I don't want to gloss over that. Like, <laughs> can you unpack the course as well? <laughs> what we teach in the matrix is to, is to uh, write and speak uh, the written story of your life in all 10 areas in the perfect mm -hmm. state as if it exists now. It's called the actor's technique. It's a script. Mm -hmm. right? like, who's your favorite actor or actress? You have one? Who do I like? Who do I like that has not slapped anybody at the Oscars? Yeah, I know. I love Will Smith. Um, <laughs> I was so upset. Uh, he's, he was my boy up until then. Yeah. I mean, I still like him. I do like, too. He's, 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 yeah, he's paradigm. He had a lot going on and it triggered. I, I actually still like him. Yeah. It's, he effed up, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll say Donald Glover. I like him a lot. So perfect. When you see him in a role, you don't see Donald Glover the human, do you? You see whatever they're acting. And what they do to get there? They read a script over and over and over and over again. See, real actors at a high level, like I think of like Robin Williams, uh, people that like, they can go from comedy to horror, like, oh my God, right? Um, yeah. They don't, they're not acting. They literally become the character for a period of time. And this is why I think there's like suicides and, and like different things like Heath Ledger. <clears throat> yeah. I think they, my opinion is they lose track of who they actually are because they're so intense 
And they could be in this role for like a year, right? And then it's the next one. And like, oh, I'm this and I'm this. It's like, who are they really? I, for us, we use that same technique to script out your life in your words and your sound as if it's already done. And you listen to it every morning. It's like brainwashing yourself. I love it. So I don't want to give you to give away all the secrets from your program, but... Um... I'll give away everything. No, I'll give away everything. It's It doesn't work like that. I, I, most of the people listening, they don't have the mental programs to, to do what I'm saying. They won't do it. <laughs> That's why they need us. So I'm never worried about giving away. It's an impression of increase. I'll give everything away. Yeah. Well, give away this. Can you give away <laughs> one of your uh, one of your daily habits that think that you believe makes you a high performer that sets you apart from other people? Listening to my life script, hands down. There you go. It, it, that's at the spiritual level, right? That's that's at the you know physically. I can go to the gym. I do that too. I, I have a morning routine: mental, spiritual, and physical priming. So I do something physical. I do something spiritual, and I I study. We're always studying content every single day, like Bob did. So spiritual is my life script. I'm tapping into source, you know, literally, literally shortening the timeline of my physical life to express all of those, those things. So the life script is hands down the, the one thing that we all do in the matrix. Yeah. That's going to be my next, uh, my next task after we hop off here. I, I love that. I'll idea. help you with it on the side. How's that? <laughs> that would be great. Thanks. So you can help me. Help me quarterback my life here. Um, and I, I don't want to keep you too long because I want to get to that that exercise. But one question I love to ask is is this. And I'm curious to see how you respond just based on our conversation. Mm -hmm. What is one lesson about entrepreneurship that you wish you would learn sooner? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I mean, the most impact I've had is working with a mentor or being in a mastermind group. Like the concept of masterminding with people that have already gone there. I mean, they can literally have a conversation and shortcut 10 years off your life, right? So I think most entrepreneurs, because the dollars are tight, they don't seek that mentorship. They don't even realize that they might be able to get a mentor for free. Like if you, if you see somebody that has gone where you want in real estate, try to spend like all day Saturday thinking of all the ways you can improve their life. I promise there's ways. And then you, you figure that out. And then you go to them and say, listen, I really appreciate what you've achieved here. I can do this, 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 this. Would you give me an hour a week just to just to crack the code? They'll do it. I mean, if if they don't, they're not the mentor you thought they were anyway. Yeah. Right? Come up with a way that you can, it doesn't have to be a money exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started working with Bob, I mean, I earned the rights or whatever. I earned the privilege of spending like a whole eight hour day with him multiple times. This is early on before we became friends because mm -hmm. of the work I did um, in there, you know, as a PGI consultant, we, we broke all the records marketing the, and selling the programs. So I literally, and it was a, it was a hundred grand a day back then to spend a day with him. I, I got that for wow. free, like three or four times. And then from that experience, we just became friends. I had his phone number and, you know, uh, then I, then I helped him start to teach other coaches and the whole thing just evolved. But it was, it was that initial, like, how can I help Bob thing? I like that. I like that as a strategy. How can I help Bob? Strategy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and and now you're sharing that all that, that with all of us here. So I appreciate it. But um, where else can we learn more about you? Like, what's the best way to, to follow up with you to yeah. get in touch? Like, no, what, super what easy. Do? It's matrixsuccessinternational.com. Matrix Success awesome. International. Yep. And on there, there's a lot. Of, like I said, there's a free wheel of life assessment. There's ways to connect with the team, connect with myself. Um, that's definitely the best way. There's a lot of we, we give a lot, give away a lot of ideas and free content. So. Yeah. Well, you have in the last 30 minutes as well. So thank you for that, Brian. Uh, I appreciate your time and look forward to chatting with you again. Same here, Ron. Same here. It's great to meet you. And that's our show for today. You can take that Wheel of Life exercise by visiting to, get ready, matrixsuccessinternational.com backslash wheel of life dash create. I highly recommend going to the show notes because that's a lot to remember. Again, I'll say it one more time. matrixsuccessinternational.com backslash wheel of life dash create. It's a challenging exercise, but you'll gain a lot of clarity by completing it. And be sure to follow Brian on social at Matrix Success Network as well. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch up with you next time. Apply what you've learned on today's show. You'll find the show notes and more resources at terryrice.co backslash podcast. Again, that's terryrice.co backslash podcast. And the best way to support this podcast is by subscribing, telling a friend, and leaving a review.
Also, you can get more tips by following me on Instagram at It's Terry Rice or follow me on LinkedIn. This episode was produced by Josh Wilcox of Brooklyn Podcasting Studio and edited by Dan Lardy. Special thanks to my wife, Dominique, for keeping our kids relatively quiet as I recorded. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you next time.